Do you follow me on Instagram? Well, you fucking better do. If you don't, how did you find me? How do you know where I am? It's impossible. Um, well, I think everyone follow. Well, not everyone, obviously. <laughs> uh, I think everybody who watches my podcast probably only watches it because of on Instagram. I put it I'm not on Instagram. I guess everyone on my Patreon. I shouldn't imagine there's people on my Patreon that aren't following me on Instagram. That would be most curious. If you are, if you don't follow me on Instagram, let me know. So I can block you, you fuck. Um only I'd never even dream such a thing. Usually I dream about raping children, uh, hit, murdering my brother with a hammer. See, I made a post similar to... Oh, uh, I hope this doesn't get back to me. That would be terrible. Murdering myself with a new... I guess it's not... Is it considered murder if you kill yourself? Are you murdering yourself or are you just killing yourself? Are you manslaughtering yourself? What if you accidentally kill yourself? Can you be tried for manslaughter? For manslaughtering yourself? Shouldn't it be person slaughter? What if a woman is convicted of manslaughter? Can she go, eh? technically it's not manslaughter because I'm not a fucking man, you son of a shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> also, I don't fucking care. That's been the You and Sucks podcast. Um, on Instagram, I had this outline of a guy and I said, give me suggestions of how he should look. Not necessarily a he, but it's obviously a he, isn't it? Um, so I'm doing that now. I'm going to make it a separate video, but I'm going to make it a... Uh, uh, a time lapse video, and I'll narrate over it. What the hell is that exact, exactly is, is going gone again? Uh, so one of the suggestions was a, a Hello Kitty backpack, but uh, since he's he's facing front, I figured I'd put the backpack on the front instead of the back. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah, that's funny. That's bloody hilarious. Oh, what fucking creative, funny, comedic wit you bloody are, you and Come to my house and entertain my children for their seventh birthday party. Like the clown you are. You shithead. So a Hello Kitty backpack is... is Item number one. I said, you know, how we should look. Body parts, uh, accessories, mutations, those sorts of things. Scars, tattoos, you know, a whole bunch of shit. And people, a lot of people, far more than I was really expecting, um... Well, everyone wants their input, don't they? Oh, you and I'm funny. Look at my suggestion. Isn't my suggestion a funny, funny suggestion? Oh, look, you and I said penis. Give him a big penis, you and that's a funny suggestion, isn't it? It might have been if a hundred separate people didn't give the same one. Seriously, a lot, a fucking lot of people said to do a penis, which I mean. It's understandable, not that I expected anything other than that, because, well, for one thing, I'm me. What the fuck else are people going to say? It was you, and he's obviously going to draw penises everywhere, isn't he? Um, but, you know, some people were, like, fairly inventive. There was a lot of penis suggestions and a lot of nipple suggestions. Um, but as I say, some people had you know, slightly more creative and or artistic idea. Um, so I tried to choose a few of those. I may, may 
may, may, may just do a separate drawing of this variety of all the penile and nipile suggestions, just to sort of see how that comes out. Um, make this like a little separate little pouch on her front. Ah, oh, hello, Kitty. You corporate mascot bastard. Do you know I used to <laughs> I used to hate Hello Kitty because of its it represented a corporation man. I was such a fucking dick for that sort of thing. I hated Hello Kitty, I hated Mickey Mouse. Um I hated going to supermarkets and using their bags because then I was walking around with a bag with their fucking branding on it. So I used to like use my own bags, which I guess is good in retrospect, because now I don't give a fuck. I just use plastic bags. I don't fucking care. Um, but to the point that like, if I was watching porn, you know, as you do, if there was like a photo set of a nice cute girl, if she had like Hello Kitty anything on her, I'd fucking go look somewhere else. I could not, <laughs> I couldn't get off to anything that had Hello Kitty in it. Um, now, it's gone the other way, and I can only masturbate to Hello Kitty articles of clothing. You know, Hello Kitty underwear or T-shirts. Like, you know, a nice young girl in a nice, tight little Hello Kitty T-shirt, obviously meant for someone vastly younger than herself. So it's very tight-fitting and short. And then a little pair of cotton Hello Kitty underwears. <laughs> you know. Uh, and now I even own a few pairs of Hello Kitty underwear. I squeeze myself into them. <laughs> oh, it's all very fun and games, isn't it? It's fun and gay. Mms. <laughs> Shall I draw the head now or shall I leave it till last? Uh, I honestly, I don't know. Um... Let's draw this arm. So it was suggested. Oh, I don't know. Should I should I say or should I leave it as a surprise? Christ, I don't know. Um, God, I don't know how long to. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that could work. Uh, I mean, you can probably even tell what it is if the ink's sh showing up. It's probably quite obvious. Ob ob obvious. Probably quite obvious why it is. I mean, it's not difficult really, is it? Uh, Well, it's it's the uh, the sandworm from Beetlejuice, the uh, Tim Burton sandworm with another worm in its mouth. Mouth that worm. That was the suggestion. Sandworm, Tim Burton, uh, Beetlejuice sandworm as as an arm. So a Beetlejuice sandworm as an arm it is. Cause! That's me sometimes at three in the morning when I can't sleep and my artwork's not coming out as I want it to and I'm frustrated with myself and everything else. And I scream, can't, into, into my pillow, just like that. <laughs> you know, like a healthy adult. Because I'm one of them. <laughs> Actually, I'm not remotely healthy in any kind of fucking meaning of the word, physically, hygienically, or otherwise mentally. Well, obviously not mentally. Come on now. 
this one's got a face, hasn't it? It's got like a an eye. Does it have a nose too? Shit. I did a little bit of research, but not enough, evidently. I don't want it all to be too clean and nice, nice. I want to make it a little bit gnarled and messy. The drawing as a whole, I don't want it all to be too neat and tidy. So every year they're in Brighton, a nice sunny seaside town in England, there's an illustration fair known as the Brighton Illustration Fair. This year, I'm going to try and go as a vendor sell my artworks and such the problem is i think they have quite a, a rigorous sort of like uh, process of choosing who they will and won't host there um from what i've seen <laughs> excuse me uh the people they do allow to show and sell there it's all very sort of Typical kind of quaint illustrations, you know, like fun, cute little drawings, cute little art and stuff. It's all like, like, I don't know if you, if you know anything about illustration as a business or an industry, it's all very much just that. Like there's not really much, I don't know, not to sound like that, but there's not much character and not much edge to it. It's all very easily palatable, you know, just nice illustration work. And, you know, some of it's good, obviously. There's some good artists that go there and whatever. And they have talks and stuff, of course, by artists who do similar things. Um, but that's part of the reason I want to go. Because I want to show up and be like a fucking punk uh, artist guy, you know, have some fucking edge. I want to show up with all my stuff in, uh, I might actually have to go to, do to a doctor. I think I might have like a sinus infection or something because I've been congested for weeks now. Um, so you'll have to excuse me if I'm sniffing and snorfing the entire time. Um, but yeah, I want to show up with all my stuff in garbage bags and just have shit. I have my table with all, almost literal garbage on it, but then my prints and things for sale there. And, you know, just be like a piece of shit. So there's all these, like... Cause, you know, I've seen photos from previous uh, events. Sadly, I've, I've never been able to go. I've never been uh, available or free at the time it's been. Um, but I've seen photos of, like, how it looks when people have their tables and stuff set up. And yeah, it's just, you know, like a typical, like at any convention or anything, just table, nice sets of prints, little racks with zines and stuff on, stickers and badges for sale and, you know, cool, 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 whatever. But it's all just a bit like, meh, cool, another one, another one, another one, which is, you know, a large part of like what I do is trying not to be that, um, which I, I feel I almost in danger of falling into with making my living doing art especially with when it comes to commissions and such because really there's only so much you can do that people will pay for um black this one's black but ultimately i guess it's whatever you make it, isn't it? so if i choose to be edgelord and you know dark and horrible then it's up to me. But that's, I just feel like it would be quite refreshing. You know, if I was going to an illustration fair and there was all this, you know, these typical illustrative artists there, I'd want to see someone who had a bit more fucking... I don't want to keep using the word edge, but yeah, someone who had some fucking grit to them, a bit of dirt in their work, not just all this clean shit everywhere. I guess tiring to look at you know it's just uninteresting it's the same with comics that's why i want to keep my comics all hand painted and have them kind of goofy and inconsistent and have some grit and texture to them because i feel like they're more interesting to look at that way um 
But that could also backfire because if I, I mean, if I get let into the fucking illustration fair, if they permit me to show my work there or whatever, uh, you know, I, when I, I, I assume I submit some work and say, this is what I do, here's my website, here's my social media, please let me show my work at your event. They'll look it over and go, oh, very nice, yeah. So when I do that, I'll show them my actual work, you know, my professional work, my Instagram, it's nice, it's cool, whatever, comic books. Mm. But then when I go, then I rock up and just fucking trash the place, my little space, obviously. I won't infringe upon anyone else's space, that would just be rude. But in terms of my own space, making it fit my aesthetic, and that's what it is. It's more my, my aesthetic, my speed would be the old... Uh, is this guy homeless? Is he a serial killer? Is he someone we should be worried about? Um, the flip side of that, of course, would be that because it's really not what people are looking for if they're going to the Brighton Illustration Fair, that uh, everyone could be very turned off by it and I make no sales. But, I mean, it's not even about the sales, is it? It's just about... It's about having photos of me being there that I can put on social media and go, hey, I had a great time at the Brighton Illustration Fair 2020. <laughs> um, that's what it's about. That's what I'm finding worryingly, increasingly. Uh, I, I'm starting to think about a lot of things in terms of how I can use it to boost, not even boost, just show on social media. It's like, hey... This month I painted this wall. This month I did this. And I've got a few things lined up which would be cool additions to that list. Um, but, you know, I think I'm still finding my way in terms of stuff like that. You know, again, now that I'm sort of doing art full time, it's like... Yeah, I'm just trying to, I guess, figure out how to use that time outside of just drawing for hours and on end, actually doing things and having things to show for it. But also just, you know, I, I like to go to more comic cons and stuff anyway, even though that it can be a bit of a, a crapshoot. Um, you know, artists aren't really sought after unless you're a big name at those sorts of things. But like, yeah, a nice little illustration fair my work on display, my comics, you know, my art books, prints and things, little individual original drawings. I thought it would be cool to have like um, a lucky dip uh, of like, you know, my, my card cartoon drawings. Um, but then have it like in a, a rubbish bag full of nothing messy, just like dry paper waste or whatever. But just garbage. So you reach in for, you know, pay a few pound, reach into the bag, pull something out, and then you get whatever's in there. Um, so you get a random drawing or whatever. You know, just a little gimmick, just to make it a bit of fun, yeah? So it's not the same garbage that you see everywhere else. Which is the problem, because everyone's doing the same shit. Because you go, well, that's just how we do it here. That's that's how the industry works. And everyone goes, oh, okay, I guess that's how I'll do it then. But then you're just, you know, pervading the same boring shit as everyone else. Which is boring. And shit. Jorts were another suggestion. So I gave him jorts. Which I assume is jean shorts. If they meant something else, my apologies, but I'm giving him jean shorts. Very, very short jean shorts, as you can see. But jean shorts, nonetheless. <clears throat> How are we doing for time? Oh, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. We're okay, and we're okay. So what else have I been working on? Well, uh, about a few... Gun biking, biking, who has guns? That's Transformers. No, it's not, is it? Transformers, robots, and... Yeah, it is Transformers. Um, this is a page I've not put up on my Instagram, but I have put it on my Patreon, so if you're watching this after I put it up on Patreon, 
you've probably already seen this, a reference to the painting of Saturn eating his son. Uh, not so much a reference to actually, more, more a straight copy of, but it's gun viking instead of Saturn. I'm working on a page, so I've done these pages, so this was the page I did first, which, you know, you've seen them all already, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. Um, but now, so the story does continue after this, but now I'm currently working on a page that comes far before that page. So if we get, if I give you a little bit of backstory, a bit of context. So Gun Viking issue two, he defeats the Mountain King. Uh, he defeats a cycloptic snow leopard tiger thing. He doesn't quite wake up in the morning because he gets bumped on the head by this mysterious stranger. And this artwork will need to be reworked a little bit. But, you know, I'll take care of that. Um, he then gets dragged away. Dragged away to this space in the glacier over here. Um, and then I guess we see the person and him him talking to the person, being like, the fuck is going on? And the person's all like, hey, no worries. And then the person reveals, reveals themselves to be Freya, this very curvy lady with lovely luscious locks of hair hair and he's like but how is this and then you see this guy here which is part of the next issue which the two pages of which again i know i've shown all the artwork so the next page is this one so uh she's all like it's okay you're in a safe place and he's like yeah but who the fuck are you and she's like my name is freya ba -da -ba -ba. and then he says freya like the yes like the goddess, but no, I'm not her, not the embodiment of her or anything else. It's just my given name. All right, so why did you bring me here? Uh, I've been following you for a long time, measuring your power. I know uh, who you are and where you're from, and I know where you're headed and who you're looking for, because I'm looking for the same person, and I know where to find him. Take me to him now, soon, of course. But I have to show you why you're here, why I need your help, and why should I help you? You needn't at all, but I ask that you do. You've grown immensely powerful, and you are our only hope. Hmm. You did bandage me up. Uh, maybe there should be a well. Hmm. You did bandage me up, if not a little much. See, you did bandage me up, if not a little much. She says, uh, well, some of them are necessary, but the others just make you look more impressive. And he says, well, you're not wrong. Um, I need to get rid of one of the wells there, because both of them start with well. But, uh, yeah, so all, all of this, the text is going to be reworked. I'll write it out separately, neater and tidier, put it in Photoshop and then overlay it when I scan the thing in so it as looks better. Um, well, you're not wrong. Uh, so come on, I'll show you where you are and where you're going. All right, make it quick and take me to him. He's putting his helmet back on. Um, so that's where I left it four or five years ago, like a long fuck in time ago. That was the last time I painted it. But then I've recently started painting it again. Um, so I painted a bunch of pages that come several pages after this page, but I've just started working on the next page, um, which I'll show you now. So uh, I'll show you where you are and where you're going. All right, take me to him. And then uh, okay, I, I'm working on it, so it's it's not, I, I don't know how much you'll be able to see through the, no, you should be able to see enough. Um, so it's a double page spread, so I'm getting two pages done in one, which is Quite neat. Um, so she's like opening the door going this um, and then this is the back of her head and the back of his head is the crevasse. That's the place called the crevasse. Um, so it's like a, a, a shanty town village thing. These are all huts, some on stilts and they're all like stacked on top of each other and you can kind of see here these are like glacier walls running perpendicular to one another down like a steep alleyway because it's she will explain uh, on the next uh, few pages. It's like a, a town, village, whatever, built into the glacier, the crack in the glacier, the crevasse. Um, so, so that's where they are. And there's like, yeah, all the huts, um, which if you've ever played a game called Jet Set Radio Future, there's a... Uh, it's like a Japanese rollerblading, graffiti painting, fast-paced action game. It's very, very cool. One of the, my favourite games ever. Um, there's a level on it called Rokoku Dai Heights. 
um, where it's made up of loads of little like huts, very similar to this, stacked on top of each other, but crazy, like they're leaning, arching over and they like form archways and they're stacked in crazy amounts on top of each other, these huge towers. And you rollerblade skate in and around them, painting graffiti and stuff, and there's wires and things you grind on. Very, very, very cool. I fell in love with it instantly when I was, I don't know, fucking 14 or younger. Um, so this is basically copied, maybe, from that. Heavily referenced. So I think if you played the game, you'll go, oh, that's quite similar. I see you've taken this idea and this idea. But it's, you know, like a medieval fantasy version of that. And they're not quite as crazily stacked. It's just the basic idea of these tiny little stacked huts. Um, and this is like a, a wall that's obviously been carved into the glacier. I'll paint that so it looks appropriate. So the idea being these are like shacks, like extensions from the glacier, but then there are homes actually inside the glacier that these people have made. Um, so then she will explain that they came here after the guy you are looking for, to gun viking, she says, um, burnt down their home. And she knows it's the same guy who burnt down his home many, many, many years ago when he was a, but a child. Um, so hence they've got a, a reason to help each other out or whatever. And then, so he'll go, so she'll explain, you know, blah, blah, blah. The the young kids don't remember, but the, the adults, uh, some of the older adults still bear the scars of the thing. And they'll be like, you know, a couple of old people with limbs missing and kids running around playing to show the thing. The thing. This is about an hour and a half's work just painting these few huts. Um, and I've got a few more to paint. These ones will like blur a bit and sort of fade into the glacial walls. This is sky here. I'm painting these people. This one's holding a pig. <laughs> um, and then she'll say, so let's go. And they'll get some some beasts up to take their chariot forth they'll get in the chariot and they'll go then some shit goes down uh then uh they come across some bandits and then for whatever reason gun viking has to fight the bandits so this is gun viking uh f fighting gun fighting viking the the bandits the very s m dressed bandits and then he gets stabbed in the gut so he's shooting him and then they're attacking him and he's about to shoot this other one and then he goes, oh no he's stabbed in the gut and so they're standing over him going ha ha i got ye stabbed ye in the gut you vagina and he's all like oh fuck he stabbed me in the gut bleeding with his holding his chest and they're all crowding around with their weapons about to get him but he's got this strange red glow about him what's happening and he grits his teeth and he goes Grrr! some berserker rage and he jumps up he appears demonic and he's ripped this guy in half just with his forearm the guy's hanging off of his arm they're all running away scared falling over themselves he's big bulky the bandages on his arms are ripping from his muscles swelling under them uh, he then grabs this one by the head and fwing flings it backwards into a pile of rocks and then he is lifting his foot as he does so and then he swings and stomps his foot down on this one red splat as he as he flattens him into the ground um and then he swings round and goes, grrr, looking at this guy. He's all startled. That's the one he ripped in half there. And he's, grrr, he's looking mad. And then he goes, ah, opens his mouth and he bites his fucking head off as if he were a bat on stage with Ozzy Osbourne. Um, so that's like, I got a few pages of Berserker Rage because I wanted to get a few pages. And they're obviously very, very red in tone compared to the very blue look of the previous pages. Um, I wanted there to be a clear contrast. See, so yeah, it starts here and then goes Rawr! there. Yeah, and that's where Gun Vikings are. That's where I'm at with painting Gun Viking. I'll be this page I've had in mind basically since I finished the last pages. These ones from years and years ago. Um, and I've been dreading painting it because I know what a pain in the eye. Just drawing it out because it's still even, it's not perfect. It's not great, but getting the perspective of everything and 
drawing the huts, making them all fit, making it look like they are separate huts and not all one thing. There's a lot to it. And you know, once it's painted, it might not look much, but it'll be kind of cool. So I'm glad to finally have it done after all these years. So once this page is out of the way, these two pages in fact, because yeah, and that's another thing, once this is done, that's two whole pages finished. So that's five pages, which is already a quarter of the way through the 20 page chapter. The first two pages are already done. This is two pages, so that's almost half the chapter done. Another two pages, there's another two page spread in the chapter, so that's another two pages in one that will be quick to do. And then there's only a few more pages after. So it's going well so far. Um, but yeah, this is this will be good to finally have this done. Um, it should look okay when it's finished. Hopefully it'll look all right. Um, but it'll be quite cool as well to see it because it'll be printed at slightly bigger than actual size across two pages. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be a fun one. A fun, funny, fun one indeed. Anyway, back to this asshole this guy let's do some more of this drawing um again as as is usually the case i will uh you know i'll, I'll finish it in a separate video and put the whole time lapse and everything together but you get to see the crux of it here yeah you get to see it for the most part well, not the most part, but you get to see the, you know, the creation, the bare bones, the fucking whatever. Give a shit, you know, you know what I mean. As if you care. You don't care. You don't care about me, you never did. Or maybe you do, and I appreciate it if that's the case. But if not, you could suck my dick. Um... So this is a squid head, basically. Someone said squid head. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to do a squid head. But one of the fucking most biggest pains in the arse when drawing squid and octopuses, cephalopods and such, is just figuring out where to put the fucking tentacles. Because you know how many they've got. You know, six slash eight on the squid and then eight on the octopus, obviously. Um, but then when it comes to actually drawing them, because you can't just have them all hanging down because it looks boring. You can't make them too messy and intertwined because it looks too much. So you've got to find this balance between... And they've all got to be like... Ideally, they've all got to be the same length. They can't curve around too much. They can't curve too... It's a lot to think about when just drawing some fucking squid tentacles. Uh, you know, it's... Almost more work than it's worth, really. But uh, if you do it well, then you get a nice squid drawing out of it, I guess. But it's not, it's not always as easy, is it? Uh, I should have another one on this side, shouldn't I? Shit. Uh, like that. Yeah, it comes back on the... Instead of... Yeah, it looks all right. Um, and then, I don't know how well this will work. Uh, there were two suggestions by two very lovely people um, that said give it pigtails. So I'm going to attempt to give it pigtails that are obviously made out of tentacles. So it's So it's got the four main tentacles and then two of the tentacles going upwards to form into pigtails. Now this one might be a bit too interlocky into that one. Oof. Uh, I think maybe that works. I might just have to ink it and hope for the best. Uh, if I bring this one down a little bit and that one can come out a little bit. Jesus. Yeah, that might work. Let's see how it comes out, shall we? It's just big bulbous eyes. 
an old Mr. Squid face here. I do like some nice big bulbous squid eyes. I may come in with um, some white out afterwards to eliminate the parts like the face uh, that I, I'd rather not have seen. Um, we'll see how that goo -goo -goo goes. And of course, drawing the tentacles is one thing, but then it comes down to, are you going to draw all the suckers on the tentacles? Because that's a whole fucking shitload of work. And I don't know if I can be fucked with all that shit. Because <laughs> that's a lot, you know. I might just make them gooey, solid tentacles as opposed to suckery, grippy tentacles. Because it's just a little bit easier. It's quite a lot to this drawing. I don't want to add more to that. God, what am I doing? Oh! This might come out not too bad. Do you know a show called Love Island? Is that a thing you people watch? This is on my list of, of shit that like, you know, if I'm having a bad day, if the depression's getting to, you know, that thing. Um, I tried to think, you know, reasons I'm glad. Well, reasons I'm glad just in general, but specifically I've got to think, well, you know, I'm now my job quote unquote, is doing art. So I have to be thankful for that more than anything else. Like that is amazing. Sometimes it's, it, you know, it becomes just a job. It becomes standard, just day-to-day -day business. So it's very easy to sort of lose sight of how joyous it is or whatever. So I try to think like reasons I'm glad to not be working my previous job, you know, surrounded by plebs peasants in a in a retail environment um one of those is i don't have to listen to people fucking talking about love island anymore going on about oh did you watch love oh my god can you believe fucking i don't know i can't even pretend to know names of people or make them up because i don't care girls and guys talking about shit no one gives a fuck about a bunch of stupid stupid fucking people in an exotic location, doing a bunch of shit. Just fucking ugh. Um, if you don't know what Love Island is, look it up. You'll have a laugh, I swear. Um, but I bring it up because... Similarly to how I'd like to go to the Brighton Illustration Fair and rock up and just be, like, not the usual kind of person they have there. Um, I always wanted to go on Love Island as a contestant as well. Again, just to be the complete opposite, the complete antithesis of of the usual sort of person they have on there. Because most of the people there, you know, they want to be on an island or, you know, in a villa, wherever it is, in the sun, by the pool, drinking, chatting up members of the opposite sex that they could potentially put their penis inside. Um, whereas I'd love to go on that show and then just not be any of that. Just be in a hoodie the whole time, stay indoors. I don't know, fucking reading or drawing, or I guess they're not... I don't know if they're allowed to do shit like that, but whatever. But it would just be funny. And then when people try and talk to me, to just be like, fuck off, <laughs> you're not interesting, fucking leave me alone, you piece of shit. And then they could quite rightly ask, why are you even here? And I'll say, I don't know. I thought it would be funny. And now I'm miserable. And then I could kill myself on the show. And it would be great. The ratings would soar through the roof, I'm sure. He's got a squid head. Oh. Uh, another one of the suggestions was a... Uh, let's see if I can do this in this pen. was a Hulk Hogan moustache. So there's there's that. Uh, oh, that's quite funny. That looks quite funny. Uh, I get yeah. I'll, I'll uh, 
the old tipex out. And this paper's slightly off-white, which is annoying, so the white out shows up a bit more than would actually be ideal. And if I put more of it in, it will look like it's supposed to be there. I don't know. Maybe it just looks messy. Maybe it looks all right. I don't know. Something in it. Uh, <laughs> how are we doing for time? Ooh, maybe another 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, let's, 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 let's get the other one done. Um, Oh, do I stomach or the other one? The other one. Mm, shit. What do I do? <laughs> Help. I don't know what to do. Uh, so that... Well, because if... Mm, that needs a lot more white, white out. Uh, Tibex. White out. I, see, I try to involve my uh, foreign listeners and watchers because I know Tipex is a brand name, and I believe it's only in the UK. Uh, maybe Europe, I don't know. I know in America it's Whiteout. So I try to call it Whiteout. Just trying to help, guys. Sorry. If that's pandering or anything, I don't know. I don't give a shit, you all fuck off. Uh, also, I was going to give him his uh, his long, like, feeding tentacles or whatever they're called that a squid have. I was going to put this one out here somewhere. And then this one would come out here. So I might add those in later. I might not. I might fucking leave it. But anyway, yeah, I have dreams of going to places and being different. Oh, brilliant, Ewan. You're so different. You're so edgy. Ooh. You know, it's just, again, it's just this, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to call it. Not like a cult, but like the cult of just the same shit all the time. And it's not even, it's never good shit as well. Like, it's usually just the same, just about acceptable shit. It's okay. It does what it does. And it's just sort of what we do here, so we keep on doing it again and again. But do something fucking different. Do something fun and exciting. Not even necessarily big fucking and exciting. Just something, you know. What do you do? Oh, I draw cute little pictures of animals. What do you do? Oh, I draw cute little pictures of animals. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I also draw cute little pictures of animals. I use watercolour. I do digital. Ooh. What do you do? I draw a Viking with guns! And it's a comic book and it's all hand painted. And it takes fucking days and days to do the smallest amount of work. <sighs> but it's a Viking with guns. Oh, what's the story? Eh, it's not really like that. You don't think of it in terms of story. You just, you know. It's not, it's not that. That. Can you tell what this is? <laughs> it's obviously a tentacle. So one suggestion was tentacle for an arm. I've got quite a few suggestions for just just tentacles. So, I mean, make of that what you will, I guess. But uh, I, one was specifically tentacle arm. Another one was one arm big and muscly and the other arm normal. So I don't know if I can make this like a big muscly tentacle arm, but then this one's quite big anyway, so... Eh. Um, but there was another just suggestion for, I believe it even said specifically, left arm covered in eyeballs. So I'm going to try and work that one in here because that could be quite a fun one. So a tentacle covered in eyeballs, yes. Quite a neat, neat idea. Maybe a couple floating here and there. A couple of floating little eyeballs. I did think I could make like suckers, but they're all eyeballs instead. But I think I'd rather have them sort of all over the place instead of just on the underside or what have you. Um, put the actual irises and pupils in different places on each one so they're not too 
samey or whatever. <clears throat> and I'm not going to make this like a, a, a smooth, gooey tentacle, but rather a, a lumpy, bulbous one. So it contrasts with the, the squid head. <laughs> uh, there are a few suggestions for a top, like a shirt for the thing to wear. Um, I wasn't sure with the backpack and all if I can really fit one in. And there is a suggestion for something to do with the tummy as well, which will probably go into the, uh, the video I do later on. Um, I won't spoil the surprise for that one. I'll leave you to fucking watch it. I don't know. Or not. At your leisure, I suppose. Uh, I'm very excited uh, with Gun Viking at the moment. I'm very, very glad to actually be doing it again, to be working on it after years of not. Um, I'm happy with how the artwork's turning out. Um, I'm excited to get it printed up, to get even more done, to get a full book out of it. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy with how it's going at the moment. So that's good news all around. Very good news indeed. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say something else on that, but yeah, whatever. Give a shit. Oh, I'm concentrating so hard on this fucking nonsense. I just thought it would be a fun little video to put together. I draw with your suggestions. Here's a fun thumbnail. Click it. Watch the video. Maybe I'll do more in the future. It might come out looking shit though. So I guess we'll see how it goes. <coughs> So there was something else I was going to say about Gun Viking, but I fucking. I fucking. Completely forgot what it was. And ultimately, like I say, I'm just very, very glad to be doing it. Very glad it's coming out. Okay. I think, like I said, there's other bits of the artwork that I will be going back and sort of fixing. Because even just after getting it printed, I was like, uh, this didn't come out quite as I wanted, or I really should have put more effort and time into this bit or that bit. So it would be good to actually get that done as well. Which is, you know, that's like any art you look at when you've finished it and you go, nah, shit, no. You know, other people say, oh, it's so good, you're amazing. Uh, but there's always something that you can see in it that you're not happy with, that you felt you should have done another way, or maybe you didn't have the skill or know how to do a certain thing. But it's very rare that, you know, you even if you intend to, it's very rare, I find, that you actually go back and change things and fix them. Usually it's the case that you move on and you just do better the next time you do a drawing like that or whatever it is. Whereas with this, I think I'm quite glad that I am actually going to be putting effort into, you know, going back and changing shit and fixing things how I want it to look. That's something. Uh, I've got some Gun Viking stickers on the way, actually. Uh, which is cool. Oh, you might have seen that on Instagram. I posted a very, very small sort of teaser, so those will be on the way soon. I've got a couple of ideas for other Gun Viking um, 
stickers as well so i might get a few more done rather than just having the one available uh, i have a couple of ideas for gun viking t-shirts which i'm a bit dubious about we'll have to see how that goes because again people a lot more people are liking gun viking than i thought would um maybe it's absence you know absence makes the heart grow from uh, people are sort of glad to see it back i don't know so hopefully i can make some fucking money off of it no it's not necessarily about that but it's about doing something cool with the the property or whatever um but also it's about making money off of it since you know that's kind of what i have to do now um so yeah some gun biking t-shirts could be cool uh we'll see how that goes uh, also i've got my slow cooker going and it's about now is where i need to go and fucking take care of a thing and stir it and then recover it and let it cook for some more time so i'm gonna do that and call it the end of this episode of the podcast uh it's looking quite funny at the moment, actually. Oh, it's, it's quite good. I uh, hope you, you know, whatever. Uh, don't get AIDS, please. <laughs>